Hello guys, welcome back to another session of Let's Learn uh, Unity. Um, so from where we last left off, we were we learned about creating our own animation, uh, and I think this is called bone-based animation. I might be incorrect, but let's go ahead and play the animation. It, it looks all right. You know, I still find the squishiness kind of funny, but you know it looks good for now, for the way it is. So yeah, let's go ahead and continue. Oh yeah, so so it looks like uh, for this part. Uh, I'm just doing this just so I could prepare my mind. Um, so it looks like we're gonna learn how to translate the the sprite to move a certain direction, and this is what we do: we use the transform dot translate uh, method, and then I guess we pass in uh, a direction and then the speed, and then we have to make it um, frame independent. So we multiply by time delta time. All right, let's go ahead and make that script first, actually. So um, we go to our scripts, create script, and he said he called it attacker, and I, f I screwed up. Can we rename it or refactor it? Doesn't seem like it. Uh, to avoid any possible errors, we're just gonna recreate it. Um, is this called attacker? And then we just double click on it. Serialize field. Float. And then we're going to update. I wonder what's easier to read. Yeah, I think this is a lot easier to read because having that separate line can really help. Alright, let's go put the script into the lizard. And we're probably going to create a prefab for this. So let's just hit play. One seems pretty good, actually. Where do you think you're going? 
And then I guess as the level goes on, I can always increase the speed. No, don't go. Does that look good? 1.5. I guess so. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. So you gotta consider that too. Do it real quick. So let's look at it again. Does it look like it's moonwalking? Well, that part did. It kind of does. So let's actually, you know, let's just make it one. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, actually, one is actually pretty good in itself. Let's actually make it point eight five. Yeah, actually, that's really good. That's actually pretty good. All right. Alright, let's. I know we, we for, I've been forgetting to do this. Um, I, I thought I had an idea, but I guess I kind of. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think I remember now. Um, higher levels equals um, higher s walk speed of the attacker. I guess that's for tuning. Why is there two? I don't know why there's two. <laughs> Alright, so now we're gonna have a quiz. Hopefully I can remember because it's been a while. What are the two main types of animation we work with in this part of the course? Sprite sheet and bone based. Bone sheet, sprite based. Sprite sheet, bone sheet. <laughs> the who's he who Who's it? What's it? And thing it jiggy. No, it's that one. Uh, which of the following can be described as a state machine for organization, organizing animations? A state machine for organizing animations. I think it's a controller. Right. 
So we've got a lizard, we have the animator, which is a component. Um, but it doesn't really create the state machine. The controller, which is this, it looks like the state machine since we have different states here. So I'm going to go with that. Nice. If you want to change the speed of an animation that has been produced from a series of sprites from a sprite sheet, which what could we change? Change the pixels per unit in our sprite sheet? I don't, I don't think that's it because it doesn't really affect the, the speed. It just makes it bigger or smaller. Change the number of samples per second for our animation? Yeah. Change the number of keyframes per second for our animation? Change um, I'll go back to that. Change the speed of the preview. Well, I mean, you're just changing the speed of the preview. That doesn't really mean anything. Right. So I think, let's go back to the third one. Change the number of keyframes per second for our animation. For our animation. Huh. So what does that mean, like creating a new keyframe or deleting the amount of keyframes um, well, I guess change that's what it means you either add more or you, you you reduce the amount of keyframes of the animation which can I think work too maybe but I'm gonna go I'm gonna have to go with the samples Uh, the two ways that we can view our animation and all of its keyframes in the animation window are dope sheet and curves, sprite sheet and samples, frames and units, walk and jump. So the two ways that we can view our animation. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to go with this one. Which of the following could we use if we want to move something on screen in the negative y direction uh, I'm assuming he's basing it off like the four quadrants like the graphing so we have positive x and y um, minus y so we want it to be going left so it's gonna be this one what in the negative y direction all right then it's gonna be right <laughs> wait Oh wait, it's Y. Oh. Dang, yeah. <laughs> I didn't read that carefully. So yeah, it'd be <laughs> in the uh, up. So it's gonna go down. My bad. <laughs> Whoa. Holy moly. So what I'm thinking that's what we're going to do is we're going to use the instantiate method again, kind of like what we did in the block breakers and the the uh, laser defender game where we, we have to make, well I mean not the block uh, block breakers but the 
the laser defender where we had to generate the enemies using a spawner so if anything it might be kind of the same more or less so let me see if I can figure it out All right, so they're gonna create a. I don't. I mean, I guess for now it's good to have turn everything to a prefab at the moment. I am noticing one thing though. Where's the event system? It has an event system. This one has an event system. This one doesn't have an event system yet. It's kind of odd. So I guess if I, if I do experience a problem, I'll I'll um, I'll probably I'll, I'll assume that the event system is the reason why we had an issue. So we, we created the prefabs for the lizard and trophies. We're gonna create an object. We're gonna call it uh, game spawner. I think that's what you call it too. But just to be safe, you just call it spawner. <laughs> so we're gonna create a script that spawns the we'll call it enemy spawner actually. that script up all right so enemy spawner it's definitely gonna need an update because we want to be spawning enemies every frame or at least continuously um, start I do think we need to uh, I guess we do need to initialize some values um, so far what I'm thinking is well there's probably gonna be multiple enemy types so we're gonna um, well I mean I guess that's a feature I'm just gonna I'm worried I'm just focusing on spawning one enemy right now which is the lizard so let's just go to config param serialize field and then this is a game object we'll call it lizard lizard yeah I guess that, that'd be fine and then Um, I guess we're going to have four different spawns. We're going to have one here, two here, three, or actually five different spawn objects in which we place them over here. We instantiate the lizard at that location and then basically once they spawn in, they should translate towards the left essentially. So let's see if we can, we can do that. It seems simple enough. So this is just one, right? So let's imagine, right, let's reset this first. Um, let's imagine we placed it over here so it's gonna generate the actually let's, let's push it a little bit back since it jumps to frame which uh, yeah uh, so then we're just gonna make it go that way and let's move this to I guess for the time being kind of push it to its like proper spot just to make it look nicer all right let's go back to the script So then, I forgot what the method was called, but I think it's called instantiate. Because this is supposed to be a prefab, right? Do we instantiate at that direction? I think that's pretty much it. We just need to instantiate and we're good. But it's kind of been a while, so I'm unsure on how to do that. Um, I'm going to go back to this because I really want to use the, the website, but I'm just unsure how to use it. Uh, anyways, um, what is it? instantiate so let's see an example of how it's used da, 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 da. instantiate then we have a position so we have prefab um, so we're gonna do instantiate oh, let's do a coroutine actually so that it doesn't spawn so frequently so let's say we have a private 
I'm gonna delete all of this, or at least adjust so that it matches to what he has. But I'm just trying to mess around and like think, like, so I could, you know, absorb things a little bit better. Because then it, I, I, I'm forced to think in a way in which I'm trying to find problems and then I need to get the solutions. And by doing that, it helps meld my brain in a way that makes it so that if a solution does exist it's hard, it's I think easier to to understand as opposed to just getting the solution right away which you probably say yeah okay that makes sense but then like it doesn't really stick at least that's for me uh, so we're gonna do uh, wait um, spawn rate spawn wait <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know the right name for it at the moment, but we're just going to call it that. Alright, so we're going to start coroutine. There we call it spawn wait. So first, we're going to instantiate the lizard. Um, that transform dot position. The position of the spawner and then we're going to yield oops yield return new wait for second seconds uh, let's say one all right let's go ahead and try that um, got a compiler issue of course we did what else we're comma Uh, what is it? Cannot convert from vector three to transform. Wait, what? Cannot convert from vector three. So we're supposed to pass vector three, but we get a transform position. And then quaternion identity. Yeah, let's go add the quaternion identity to quaternion. Let me quickly just check how what how I did the um the sp Bonner for the what do you instantiate? Wait, yeah, trans transform position. Here we're getting the transform. We're getting the we're referencing the object, and then the position of the object, or the waypoints uh, transfer position. Here I want the spawner. So I just go here. Oh wait, is this supposed to be lowercase? Wait, what happened? I thought I got an error. Oh, maybe this was the issue. Probably need to include that. Uh, Alright, cool. So let's go ahead and see if it works. Oh right, right, that. We need to make an object here. So let's go to prefabs and then we're gonna drag and drop a lizard and then we're gonna hit play 
What the? What? <laughs> uh, I guess it's always gonna start a coroutine. Let's put this over here. That might be better because then it waits one second and then spawns a new one. Nope. Alright. So I'm guessing maybe we don't do it here. Um, in our laser defender. Um, well, first of all, we, we do limit the amount of enemies to kind of... Uh, spawn so that's why it doesn't overdo it um, yeah so here we in this part right here um, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it but yeah this part uh, we do have a limit a limited number of enemies that were spawning and yeah and then we're also delaying them, and it does it in a in the start as opposed to the update. Wait, it's an I enumerator, huh? All right, let's go ahead and do that then too as well. Enumerator. Wait, is it do while? So I guess we don't need the update. My got my thought was that we did since we were, we were we do need to like constantly be spawning enemies over time, and that's what the update was for to do to be doing something every frame while looping. It's looping. <laughs> oh, ah, I see. So if you want to spawn it once, or if you want to keep continuously spawn. So let's go ahead and do that too. Let's get our field. Is looping. Probably be better. While it is looping. Uh, then you want to return, yield return. Return start. Is it new or just start a code team? Yeah, it's that one. And then we're gonna do a spawn. Wait. For which we instantiate. It's just a bit like kind of like what we did. And then wait for let's say two seconds. So this, well, which are well, we kind of seen it in action. Um, so the lizard just does spawn here, and they do move. It's just that they're spawning way too much. So that's why we moved it to the start. Right. I think the update we we probably need to make it frame independent. I think that was the issue. Maybe. Maybe that was the issue here. All right, so let's go ahead and first of all, we need it is looping so that there's we can test out if more than if it works with more than one instance of the loop of the lizard being generated. Nice, that looks good. Well, there you go. <laughs> Trophy float animation. But yeah, so far they're just on a pilgrimage to nowhere. And they're probably going to have a shredder here. Which, like, any object that touches it 
uh, will get deleted. And I, I think I gotta make sure, that, like, before I made it so close that um, it was con like it was deleting the objects as immediately after they were being created. And I got confused, but yeah. So we're definitely gonna make sure that happens. But we'll just stop it here and then go back. So you just put the prefab stuff. Oh nice, we got that. Hmm, but my question is why? Why do we need to do that as opposed to just doing a private start and just do it and then or avoid type start and and then just starting the coroutine? Like why do we need to do that? Yeah, I guess that's why I'm kinda confused. I mean, we could try. Like, let's see if we don't do this. Right, let's do void, and then instead of returning anything, we're just gonna start the code routine. Let's see if that works. Local compiler issues. I'm hoping. Nice. All right, let's go and see what what happens. Oh, I think it froze. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess that's what happens. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Oh, it did freeze. What? Yeah, it froze. Dang it. Something's happening, I don't know what's happening. I'm gonna have to restart Unity because it's kind of lagging my 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 PC because for some reason I that breaks it 
What? I'm confused. Why it breaks it. Alright. I'll pause the recording for now and be back. Yeah, then I'm gonna have to end it here. For what? Wait a minute. I've seen this guy before. Okay, never mind. I've been using the Pomodoro technique for months now, and it's been the best time manager technique I've used to keep. That looks great. Um, I've recently started time blocking to work for me. Hmm. Can be a fun little good project. Yeah, I've been using code. Still trying to get the hang of it, but By the way, thanks. I'm confused. Sorry about that, I was reading the message. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it broke. What? Why did it do that? <laughs> so I guess <laughs> that's why I shouldn't do it. <laughs> what? Alright, I guess, uh, wait, I'll be right back real quick. Alright, I'm back. So, there I, <laughs> uh, did it save? It didn't, dang it, it didn't save. Uh, oh wait, it did save. Wait, what? Oh, good thing we made the prefab. Oh, I'm glad we made the prefab. <laughs> 
All right, so you just drag and drop spawner, and <laughs> we're good. Thank, thank goodness we we did prefabs, or else we would have lost all that progress. So let's see that again. Wait, I, the script is it gonna break again? Yeah, it seems like it broke. So I'm gonna end the process real quick. Hold up. All right, I'm restarting it. Dang it. Force quit. Yeah, I guess that's the reason why we don't do that. All right. <laughs> that's weird. Why? Why doesn't it work like that? We did look didn't. Alright, let's just run that again. Wow. Alright, so now I'm gonna put down my learned <laughs> having a having the stars the start um start a coroutine without Routine without turning an I enumerator breaks unity. What? Because, in my opinion, I don't think it should do that. Like, we could call start coroutine even if I enumerator is false. I'm guessing it's because of the while loop. It's always going to start the coroutine. Or maybe that's why we don't use while loops in start, because, um, well, if the start supposed to only happen once in the life cycle. If we're stuck in that st in the start method, then the life cycle doesn't really work out. That's why we have the update method for. Huh. Interesting. Well, we learn from mistakes. <laughs> I think I learned something. <laughs> I don't know. Let me see. Let me write it down. I think it has something to do with the while loop placed within the start method. So think about the life cycle of the game, and, and we will see that we. I think because we can't get stuck in the start method, right? At least, I don't think we do, can. Um, so yeah, this is all just like through observation. It's, uh, it's definitely wait. Let me do yield return. It's definitely not. Um, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but this is what I'm interpreting. It probably has something to do with the life cycle. Um, has something to do with like the life cycle because we when we go to the life cycle of the, uh, the game we do have to go to you know move on to the this section but if we have a while loop here and I guess there's a difference between of course there's a difference between void start void start and I enumerator start one I guess because it's void um, it's probably not moving because yeah, it is stuck here, but as opposed to I enumerator, which returns a coroutine, and I guess in that sense it does progress through the life cycle, as opposed to making this or calling the while loop in void. I mean, calling it the while loop in the void type uh, method, then it gets stuck here, and then it kind of breaks the life cycle because we're then we're not moving anywhere and I guess that does break the game well like all the other scripts they're probably you know moving on through the life cycle but the if we just kept it as the void type it would just be here and I guess that causes errors and then 
I'm just repeating just so I can kind of gather my thoughts a bit. So then we have I enumerator. So we can return something. And when we return something, we can progress through the life cycle. I guess that's what's happening. At least that's what I'm seeing. Or that's what. That's what. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it as that for now. Um, but maybe someone will say in the comment section. And yeah. Wait. Oh, oh, you're supposed to do the challenge. My bad. Um, so turn start method into a core routine. While our spawn bull is true, keep spawning. So is it like kind of like this? Or. I don't know. For that, I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. Um, spawn randomly between one second and five seconds. So in here, we're gonna have, um, I guess, a random value between one and five. Um, let's see. Um, I know there's like we have to be careful and we have to make sure that we have to um, either use unity engines definition of random versus system dot collections we have to delete one of them I'm most likely gonna rely on unity engines uh, random random class or, or namespace so I think we need to delete one of them. I forget which one though. Let me just look at the scripts real quick. Should be in block breakers. Um, assets. Scripts. So where would we need to generate random numbers? I think that might be game status or level. F. Nope. Just like a level. Nope. Nope. Block. Oh, I think it's a ball. Could be a ball actually. Let me. Nope. I guess we can kind of tell if we just look at the top, and if we have both of them, they don't. They probably don't have it. So it's actually like a ball. Nope. We commented. So we have to comment both of them. Alright, so then where's the random? Random factor is 0 0.2.5. 0 0.25. Um so yeah, let's go ahead and just comment this out or just delete it. Um so then we have serial lies field uh, I'm not I'm not sure where I'm going with this actually so let's look at the random Oops. here it is random dot range zero to random factor so um, be random dot range zero to or says so he said one to five seconds so one is it float value? Yeah, it is. All right. And then five. Up. I'm not sure if it's exclusive or inclusive. Um, let's let's go check then. Check that out. It is inclusive. Oh, cool. Um, huh. I guess we can't serialize it. I think that's good for now. So let's let's see this in action. Uh oh. Does that mean I can't I have to start everything all over again? Oh man, that's gonna suck. Yes, curiosity killed the cat. We still have all the prefabs and stuff. Oh, it's being used by another process. Uh, I'm gonna have to pause again. 
All right, so what I did is just, I just, um, it seems like there's some issue with the resources being used. And I'm guessing that's like a bug right now, or, or like Unity still, the one that I had was still running. Um, so I was using the resources. Um, uh, let's just enter save mode, but yeah, it's, it was using the resources needed to um, access the the files. So I just needed to end the process and just um, yeah, e exit the process and I think it helped. All right, I think yep. All right, nice. All right, thank goodness. I was worried that we might need to start over. I mean, we didn't do much. But I, I guess I already spent this much time on it. I don't want to like start over. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I guess you know if I had to, I wouldn't mind. But it is it stings a bit. So let's go to prefab and then just drop in the spawner, which should have this enemy spawner script. And we do still have some issues, I believe, compiler issues. Uh, I think so. Right. So we still have some issues so line 10 line 17 i enumerator i enumerator did i spell that wrong oh right because we needed the we needed that We needed those uh, namespaces. Well, let's see if the random does get affected by it or not. All right, seems to be working fine. That's a good sign. And it's randomly generating between the values. Nice. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Wait, what? All right, one. One, two, three. All right, one two three four five all right so it, it works cool 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 so we met all the conditions let's go ahead and continue with the video uh before we continue actually, i actually am curious why it didn't work so let's see start coroutine in a while loop in the start method of unity. How to use always not inside the function. Okay, here's the situation. In this script, Unity is supposed to prompt the user to put the button they must press. I'm trying to figure I'm trying to get the user to finish the game if they press the correct buttons ten times. Unfortunately, this piece of code is giving me major problems. Inside the update, the code simply executes forever, presumably because the X resets to zero every frame. However, when the X is declared in start or anywhere else, the loop runs one time. If I move the loop to start, it also only runs once. Huh, interesting. So the even if we put a while loop, in the start method it only runs once but why did it why did uh, mine feel like it, or felt like it was running forever and huh. well let me see if I can solve it seems like a pretty simple problem um, maybe well I mean you can instantiate the X here. You don't need to reset it every frame. You don't need to do that. I guess for the start, you just need to. Oh, you're doing a cover team. You're doing a cover team. So wait for three seconds. It's the key enabled. So I guess this is just to make sure that the user doesn't mash buttons all the time. Um, so yeah. So then we start the cover team. So we wait. Wait. But wait, this is waiting. It's waiting, right? I mean, he's not using threading, I don't think. So the key... 
key is between 1 to 6, and then this key is enabled false. So we have x equals 0, while x is less than 1. So I'd probably move that over here, initialize it here, or initialize it at the start method. Um, the while loop, while x is less than 1, looks fine. Uh, if the key equals equals 1, we're getting the sprite. What? If so, if we press one of the keys, then we generate a different value, and then we increment x. Oh, I see. So he, the objective was to press the right button. Um, oh wait, no one commented on this. Twenty eighteen. Tutorial scripting. Ah. I'm curious what what's the point of this one? Like why did they do that? Maybe it's just for future reference, or maybe I can just ignore that. So success press if Oh, so this is success press. Then what's the point of the key? W A S D what? Wait. What's the point of the key? The key it ra okay, so it, it it generates a random number, so then it could be either one, two, three, four, five, uh, or else one, two, three, one, two, three, and it, he's he's using the unity one, right? So then it's inclusive. So then five and six should be here. Um, so then let's say you know key is three. So then. Like let's say if I press, so I guess we can only press like if the key is three, and we press S, then that's the right answer. Then we generate a new key. Essentially, that's what it is, and it increments the X value so that if it becomes, wait, I thought he said ten. Yeah, ten times, but this is only says one. So in this case, if the user presses the right one one time, it'll exit. Wait. Yeah, it'll exit. So why is this incrementing? I thought we only want to increment it. Oh, and then, yeah. So if, if there's an else here, then it's automatically incrementing all the time. So then, like, there's no point. <laughs> there's no point in, uh, like, guessing it since... You know, all of these fail, so then it'll just go here. Actually, wait, no, not all of them fail, but there's a higher chance of it failing, considering, you know, it goes it's going by really fast when it's when, like, the PC is calculating the the numbers. Um, but it could have a chance to be here too, if it generates a number between one to four, and then, but then, you know. I'm not. I'm still confused by this, uh, but like, but the the user has to be pressing an input at that time, or else if they don't, then they miss it. So it's not whether they're pressing the right button, but pressing the right button at the right time, which is, I feel like a little bit more tough or a little bit more difficult, because then that's a lot of time you gotta keep up with. Um, so in terms of solutions, uh, I guess putting. The or initializing X in the start would be pretty good to do. Um, what was this issue? It says when inside the update, the code simply executes forever. Huh? Why is that? Oh, because we were resetting. But I mean, oh yeah, because update calls every time, right? So yeah, that makes sense because. When you're running a game, it executes forever. That's what the update method does. It it's technically like a while loop, kind of. So that part, that's fine. That's like part of the the game itself, presumably because X resets to zero every frame. Um, I don't think that really matters because you already have your own while loop here, and it, it won't leave the while loop until the condition has been met. And then once it breaks out, then x equals 0. Then it resets. Which is actually, now I'm looking at it, maybe it might be a good um, 
get a better placement I wouldn't say good placement but better placement than the start method because we do want to reset it after each game and I guess this is a game technically however when the X is declared in start or anywhere else the loop only runs one time I think that's also because of the 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 way it's been made like the start only happens once and that's because you know I think you need needs to follow the life cycle and just needs to go to the update when it when we need to do loops if I move the loop to start if I if I move the loop to start it also only runs once mm, yeah I guess that's pretty much the solution just uh, make sure to specify the key values and delete this because it's this is basically ending the game immediately because the point of increasing X is when the user gets it right and yeah so the like you said the success press so if the user guesses it right, right then this value increases and then it, once 10 has been met the game has been over um, but then you have this enumerator. I'm, I'm confused about this part, but I guess that's for something else. Kind of like what this is for, too. Uh, and yeah. All right. I guess I've been I spent quite a bit of time on this because I think like looking at other people's problems and trying to figure out the solution does also help me like think like a programmer in a way. Like see, because I used to think like this. Like I used to code this type of stuff. It's like it's kind of like a good review. Like I I by no mean am trying to like disregard this person's like skills like we all started from somewhere um, and trust me my code was w way worse than this when I was starting out <laughs> as long as this guy, this guy keeps trying I think he'll, he'll probably be better he'll he's probably gonna be better than me because <laughs> I'm like only coding like a few hours a day <laughs> Um, all right, so well, I was already one hour. Wow, I waste. I mean, I didn't waste my time, but like, I spent way too much time on that. <laughs> I apologize, but I guess um, we're gonna continue tomorrow. Um, we were trying to figure out, or rather, I mean, we did solve it, right? We just needed to go to the spawner um, and then change the i um, the, the start to an i enumerator. Um, yeah. Or else I you would I would break the the my, I think my PC was gonna break was going to break if I had kept it there. Well, anyways, all right. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.